A long time. I've been preaching 45 years. If the uh, Lord lets me live till November, that's a long time. I've been pastoring 42 years this month. Can you imagine a Bible school sending a 20-year-old single man to start a church? <laughs> I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> and, uh, I got it started, and it got started, and they said, we can carry on without you. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, I've, been, I've been where I am now since uh, uh, February 1987. We started the Bible Baptist Church there in Deland. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I have never seen a day when more people are quitting, more people are, who haven't quit yet are yeah. discouraged and... I've never seen a day when preachers seem to have nothing to say but all is lost and there's no hope. Right, right. And quite, quite honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, fed up yeah. with all the whining and all the complaining and all the defeated yeah. attitude. And I, I, I've got the solution to it. I've been trying so hard to get people to buy into the solution. I just have to keep preaching this over and over and over again. And if I preach this up the road, I was over here in October. If I preach this in October, I'm going to preach it again. I might preach it tonight and again tomorrow night. Yeah. Us, us preachers, we're, we're always jealous of these singers. People listen to them in the car and then come into church and hope they sing the song they just heard in the car. I preached up in Virginia at a meeting. I've been going to this church for years, and I, a couple of years ago, I preached a sermon. This lady came up, she pointed to Marjorie and Bible, said, you preached that here in 2006. You need to get some new material. <laughs> I was like, we can't catch a break, man. It's good. And that used to be, you know, you'd preach something on Sunday, and if it went well, you'd take it out on the road with you. Now you get to the church, I saw that last night on the, on the YouTube. Well, there goes that, you know. Honestly, you can't come up with seven new sermons every week. It's pr pretty tough. So just do like our church and just, uh, they don't hear anything you say. So you just <laughs> preach it again. They said, well, good. I never heard that before. I, pre I preached it last month. <laughs> you were there playing Parcheesi on your phone or whatever it is you're doing during church. But anyway, I, I don't think all is lost. Amen. I really don't. I, Jesus said the gates of hell not prevail against his church. Amen. I just I think too many too many of God's people are staring at the gates of hell instead of the risen Christ. That's 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 what I that's what I believe, and uh, we don't have a lot of help. I'll get to the text here in a minute. We don't have a lot of help. Uh, I was sitting there thinking, uh, brother Sam, brother Sam, one of the nicest men I ever met. He's uh, honestly he uh, he's been so kind to me through the years and preached up there many times. Brother Jerry's a, a nice uh, fellow. But uh, uh, listen, when we were young Christians. All over America, God's people were influenced by holy, godly, straight, hard preaching men, Lester Roloff, Oliver Green, J. Harold Smith. And now they've been replaced by Osteen and Joyce Meyer and Rick Warren in this crowd. Honestly, honestly, we don't have any national voices yet left that are preaching the Bible. We, we don't have anybody left who's recognized by Christians from coast to coast and border to border as a, as a, as a, as a leader who stands on this book. Amen. And we're, we're, just, we're, we're diminished to a little church here and a little church there and a pastor here and a, an evangelist there. And I understand we're outnumbered. But we're not outnumbered like the church at Ephesus was. We're not out, outnumbered like the church of Philippi was. We're not outnumbered like that little band of Thessalonica were. And so uh, God never needed a big, a big crowd. He just needed some faithful people. Amen. 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 And I'm just going to try and encourage you best I can. As long as God allows me to stand in the pulpit and preach, just to not give up and, and not Amen. give in and not accept this, this attitude that there's nothing left can be done, but just hang on by our fingernails and, and, and hope that uh, the devil doesn't overrun us. I don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to stand, having done all stand, and one day we'll hear a trumpet sound, we'll disappear, and then it'll get bad. Then it'll, then it'll get as bad as some people think it is right now. I like how people get in their, in their $50,000 car and go out to eat at a restaurant and talk about how bad the economy is. <laughs> Amen. I, mean, I mean, you got to admit, we can complain about what gas costs, but we still fill up. And you complain about what groceries cost, but you're still buying them. 
Praise the Lord. And God's been good to us. He's been, been really good to us. Anyway, I've got to get to the, to the message here. Uh, Heavenly Father, help me tonight to be a help to your people. Lord, I pray that you would, uh, if we can do it in just a few minutes, try to shake off some of the gloom and doom that's beset uh, so many of us uh, as, as we look in the wrong places and see the wrong things. Help us, please, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter number 17. Luke 17 and verse number 20. And when he, that's Jesus, was demanded of the Pharisees. Okay, so we're already, we're already out, of, out of line here. Who is a Pharisee to make, making demands of Jesus? <laughs> who, who is anybody to be demanding that Jesus do anything? Well, the Pharisees demanded of, uh, of uh, he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come. He answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Three points tonight, and here's the first one. The Pharisees were in the process of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah. Because their view of the Old Testament prophecies was that when Messiah came, he would establish Israel's monarchy. He would make them supreme over the Gentile powers. And since Rome was still having dominion, and since uh, the, the enemy still had them underfoot, they believed that Jesus Christ was somehow failing in his mission and coming short of the promises that God had made to the nation of Israel. Later, later, he would be crucified when the nation said, We have no king but Caesar, and preferred a Barabbas to the Lord Jesus Christ because he would not overthrow the political power of the day and establish a new world order with Christ the King of the Jews and the Jews ruling over the people of the world. When, when Jesus died and was buried and rose again, he's walking on, on a road to, to Emmaus with two disciples who are sad on the morning of his resurrection, who are depressed and failing to believe the report that the tomb was empty. And when Jesus asked them why they were so down in the dumps, they said to him, we trusted that he would have redeemed Israel. But he went and got himself crucified. I'm telling you, the disappointment in the days when Jesus Christ walked this earth, was, was in the hearts of his people because they wanted him to fix the political system. He, they wanted him to fix the economic system. They wanted him to correct the errors of the governments of the world. And he was not intent on doing that. Amen. And I believe he will. Amen. I believe Jesus Christ coming back to this earth. I believe he's going to rule and reign all nations as King of kings and Lord of lords. I believe that. But it won't be today. If it won't be tomorrow, it won't be for at least seven years. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Now, now listen, here's what he said. The Pharisees said, why aren't you doing anything about the mess in this world? And he said, uh, fellas, you're missing it. The kingdom of God's within you. Yes, amen. He said, I'm busy doing something right now. Right. But I'm not doing it on the outside, I'm doing it on the inside. I'm not doing it in the lives of people who don't know me. I'm doing it in the lives of people who do know me. Amen. And as long as you are intent on demanding that I fix the world for you, you're going to be disappointed with me because I'm not here to fix the world for you. I'm here to fix you for the world. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. Jesus Christ does not want to fix Congress so you don't have to complain about Congress. He wants to fix you so you'll stop being a complainer. Amen. Jesus, Jesus Christ doesn't want to make the government righteous so that you don't have any, any problems in your life and any difficulties in your life. He wants to make you righteous so you can be a light in a dark world. Amen. 
And I'm telling you tonight that the, the Holy Spirit of God, having saved your soul, can give you love in a hateful world and joy in an unhappy world and peace in a troubled world and gentleness in a violent world. And we need to stop focusing on what God isn't doing in the world and get back to rejoicing in what God is doing in our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't, know what, I don't know what relationship Joe Biden has to Jesus Christ. I don't know if Joe Biden even believes in Jesus Christ. Why would I let that mess up my life and my family and my joy in the Lord and my hope in the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord. If saved people uttered the name Jesus as much as they do Donald Trump, if saved people uttered the name God Almighty as often as they do Nancy Pelosi, they wouldn't be so troubled. Amen. 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 The Pharisees demanded, Jesus, when are you going to fix that Roman government? He said, I'm here to fix you. Jesus, when are you going to do something about this world? He said, you know what, there's a world inside you. The, look at it. The kingdom, he said in verse number 21, Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. They were so interested in the Lord, Messiah, King coming to do something external that they were missing out on he, the fact that he had come to do something internal. And, and can, I, can I say to you tonight, uh, I'm asking permission, but I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> we, we live in a day and time, I said this last night at our church, when, when, my, when my father would come home from work and we would, we would sit at the supper table and we would eat supper and we couldn't talk because the news was on. And the news was 30 minutes a night on three channels. And that was it. And when that 30 minutes was over, that was all you were going to know about the world. That's the way it is. Walter Cronkite signed off, or Hunt Lynn Brinkley uh, faded into the, into the background, and we just, everybody got back to their lives. Now, 24 hours a day, you can absorb yourself in plane crashes and riots and wars and famines and diseases and sin and communism and corruption and what good has it done you? All it's done is filled your heart and mind with what Satan is doing so that you have, have, have been, and I don't mean you because you're here on a Monday night, you're the cream of the crop and, 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 the, and the, top, you know, the, the top dog in the show and all that. But I'm telling you, our churches are filled with people right. whose great influence in their life is not the Bible, it's the news. Right. It's not the Word of God, it's conservative news. Well, that's just as rotten as liberal news. Amen. It's losers losing. It's unhappy people talking about their unhappiness. And then the commentators come on and just gripe. Right. What Jesus said, hello, the kingdom of God is within you. And if you'd stop demanding I do something about them, I could do something about you. You... Do you not think you could be happy in an unhappy world? Do you not think you could be victorious in a world full of defeat? Do you, do you not think that God could elevate your life above any swamp? Amen. Yes. You know what Jesus said? You focused on the wrong thing. Get your focus off of blaming God or questioning God because He won't fix what you want fixed and get excited about what He is fixing. Amen. Your marriage, your family, your attitude, your heart, your mind, your church. Those are the things He's working on right now. Amen. If we get in cooperation with Him, I tell you, we'd be a lot happier. Praise the Lord. Well, well, I'm going to hurry on here. I could say a lot about that, but that's enough. 
He said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. Amen. You got that? But Dale talked about when he, when he started preaching all that faith we had and everything else. I'll tell you what else we knew. You may as well drop out of college and not get a job because the rapture is going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I believe the rapture can happen tonight. But I'm, I'm guess, I gassed up this afternoon. I filled the tank. You, you understand what I'm saying? Jesus said, the day will come when you will wish that it was the day of my return. And what if it's not? The day will come when your, your desire will be, Lord, things are so bad. Things are so corrupt. People are, are, are so apostate. We just need you to come back. And he said, you're not going to see that happen. Isn't that interesting? Every, every member of our church who, who went to be with the Lord this week, uh, or this, this past year, every member of our church went to be with the Lord this past year, all of them believed in the rapture. All of them hoped to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air without dying. And they didn't. But they all got home to glory. Amen. You see? So, so we have a blessed hope. But it's not our only hope. And we have a desire for Christ to come and the trump to blow and the Lord to shout. And we all go up to meet him in the air. We do have that hope. But we also have hope. That if we live out our days, God will do great things in our lives. I don't want to lose that hope. Verse number 23, they shall say, Do you see here or see there? Go not after them to follow them. For as the lightning that lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth under the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. You know one reason why people quit hoping for the Lord's return? Because so many preachers lied to them. They set dates, they pointed to headlines, they pointed to news events. This is a fulfillment of prophecy. You know what the fulfillment of prophecy is? When every eye on the face of the earth sees Christ coming in his glory, just like they see the sun come up in the morning. Until then, get up, eat your breakfast, put your clothes on, go to work. Amen. Amen. Man, I was a young Christian. They, they, I just, I got, Jimmy Carter was president when I got saved. And uh, he gave away the Panama Canal. And he was a Southern Baptist who never gave the gospel. And so people decided he was the Antichrist. And then Ronald Reagan got in office. And Ronald, six. Wilson, six. Reagan, six. Six, six, six. There he's, Ronald, Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist. And, and, but he wasn't. And then, and then Bill Clinton was the Antichrist. But, <laughs> His wife, maybe, but, <laughs> but, but he wasn't. And then George Bush and Y2K and all the rest. I, I, I can say one thing. Nobody thinks Joe Biden's the Antichrist. <laughs> I haven't heard one person even suggest that. <laughs> They're like, uh, no, no. It's, <laughs> no, it's, that, that's not going to happen. But all of these false Listen, looking to the world, even for our prophetic hope, only served to discourage Christians. Well, you know, Israel became a nation, and, and a generation's 30 years, and so uh, 30 years, that's 1947 and 1977, yeah, except it wasn't. Well, no, a generation really is 40 years, so it's 1987, yeah, except it wasn't. Well, you know, there's 6,000 year periods and they ended 2,000, so we're out of here. Yeah, except we're not. You know what the Lord said? How about what I said I want to do in your life? Instead of trying to, to discern the, the times by the headlines, instead of trying to demand that God do better because of the headlines, how about let the Holy Spirit that lives inside your heart do His work in you? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Anyway, second, I got to get to the second point here. You, saw, you made like 20 points. No, just one official point. Those were all, <laughs> those were all unofficial points. Uh, first, He must suffer uh, many things, be rejected this generation. Okay, here's the second point, verse 26. As it was in the days of Noah, 
So shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Now this, this, this is very interesting. Stay with I'm, I'm going to go fast, you listen fast, we'll be out of here. Listen, this is very interesting. The days of Noah, Genesis said, were filled with violence, corruption, Amen. perversion, evil thoughts and imaginations. Amen. That's the Genesis record. Right. But when Jesus Christ addressed us in the book of Luke, he didn't mention any of that. Amen. Right, hang in there, hang in there. The days of Lot. Lot lived in a town called Sodom. Anybody ever heard of a town called Sodom? It's, it's where we get the term Sodomites. There were bands of sexual perverts marching in the streets of the city demanding that visiting men be given over to them for carnal uh, uh, entertainment. Did I, did I say that without really coming out and saying anything? And because of that perversion, God burned those cities with fire. That's the Genesis record. And I believe that. And yet, when Jesus spoke to us about the days of Lot, he didn't mention any of that. Now listen to me. When Jesus Christ spoke to us in the book of Luke, he said, they bought, not a sin. They sold, not a sin. They drank, not a sin. They ate, not a sin. They got married, not a sin. They let their kids get married, not a sin. You know what he said? In the days of Noah, God was building a great big boat right in front of their face, and they just weren't paying attention. In the days of Lot, angels were coming and pleading with people to get out of town, and they just weren't paying attention. You know what Jesus said? Here's what I'm afraid of. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a great work in your day like I did in Noah's day. I'm going to be bringing great deliverance in your day like I did in Lot's day. And you're going to be so busy going to the store and putting stuff in your garage and piling things in your attic and shopping on Amazon and going to a wedding and going out to eat that you're going to miss what I'm doing. Well, that world was sure wicked in the days of Noah. God built an ark and saved people from destruction. Amen. Did you miss that part? <laughs> well, I tell you, in those days a lot, they, people were sure terrible. Yes, and God delivered everyone that was righteous before the fire fell. Amen. Did you miss that part? Right. You know what's killing us, people? You know what's killing us? We're, we're better citizens than the lost people. We're more polite than the lost people. But that's it. They go to Walmart, we go to Walmart. They don't give out tracts, we don't give out tracts. They go to Home Depot, we go to Home Depot. They don't tell anybody about Jesus, we don't tell anybody about Jesus. They go home at night, Bible sits, uh, if they got one, the Bible sits on the shelf, they watch TV all night. We go home from church, put our Bible on the shelf, watch TV all night. You know what the Lord said? The problem was not the Sodomites. The problem was not the perverts. The problem was not the giants in the earth. The problem is most people were just living like God wasn't doing anything. And they missed it. And I'm telling you, most people sitting in our churches, not, not you here tonight, but most people sitting in our churches, their life would be no different if Jesus had never come. If God had never given them the Holy Spirit, their life would be no different at all. There's a day when they got saved, and there's a day when they, they go up in the rapture or go through the doors of death, and thank God I'm going to heaven one day, but nothing in between those two days is any different than it would have been if they'd never met Christ. And it's killing us. Read my Bible through in a whole year, go to 20 websites in one day. Sunday school? 
Midweek service? Really? I don't know. How many movies can you watch? Well, I don't watch bad ones. I know. I don't go to nasty websites. I know. But what about God? What about the world going to hell? What about Christ building his church? When Jesus Christ pointed to the days of Noah, he didn't name any sins. What he pointed to was indifference. When he pointed the days of Lot, he didn't point to the unbridled wickedness. He pointed to his people doing what they did. Can I, can, some of you are not going to like this. I'm going to say it anyway. I don't think everyone who lived in Sodom and Gomorrah was marching in the streets. Somebody's running a grocery store. Somebody's running a carpenter shop. Somebody's fishing. Somebody's paving roads. Lot wasn't doing that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We said, oh, this world, I tell you, this world's never been so bad. It's so corrupt. Our world is so corrupt. Come on. Come on. If one of us, if one of us had our house broken into this past year, it would have shocked everyone. You know why? Because your house hadn't been broken into. Most people on your street aren't robbing your house. How many have been to the store, I don't know, once a week for the last year? You didn't get shot. You know what I'm saying? The news doesn't report planes that land. <laughs> It reports planes that crash. The news doesn't report the millions and millions of people who aren't in a car crash. They just report the head-on collision with the... Right? And so, if it, the more time you spend with the world's reporting of the world, even that is not accurate. I, I, I stopped today and, and dropped off some things, and the people there, uh, other customers, were polite, and the employees were polite. I went to a store. The people in the store were polite. The employees were polite. I got to the motel. People at the motel were polite. Everybody's not corrupt. Everybody's not a pervert. Everybody's not a murderer. But I'll tell you one thing. Until I got here, I didn't meet anybody that was talking about the Lord. And then sometimes you get to church and they're not talking about the Lord. They're talking about the score. They're talking about the gas price. They're talking about the... The problem in our country, hear me, it is wicked. It is bad. It's way worse than it was when I was a boy, when you were a boy. But it's not as bad as the reports you're watching. The people you say, look at the, uh, did you see the news? People are so horrible. Nobody you know. You're spending your time with the worst of the worst and you don't even know them. You're just inviting them to come into your heart and make you unhappy and make you despair. People I know love Jesus. They go to church, they sing hymns, they go to prayer meeting, they get together and go out and knock, get on, and knock on doors, they, they, they sit before and after church and talk about the Bible. Amen. That's the world I live in. With all that going on out there, I can live in that world. Amen. You understand? There's nothing wrong with buying and selling. Just don't leave God out of it. There's nothing wrong with eating and drinking. Just don't leave God out of it. There's nothing wrong with marrying and giving in marriage. Just don't leave God out of it. And what characterized the days of Noah and the days of Lot when Jesus was talking to us was indifference. And what's killing our churches is indifference. All right, third point, third point. The Bible says in verse number 30, Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which should be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. He's in the field, let him likewise not return back. This is part of the second point. This is not the third point. Yep. <laughs> so, did I read that right? 
He which should be upon the housetop. So what's he doing on the housetop? Well, if you read Proverbs, it's <laughs> 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 yeah. so better dwell in the corner of the roof than in a, I can't remember, is it a, in a wide house with a brawling woman or in a brawling house with a wide woman? I, it's one, one, of the, one of the two, I can't, I, I, I can't remember, anyway. But no, get the verse here. This guy's on the housetop and the Lord's coming. Why would you go in the house and get your stuff when the Lord's coming? Doesn't that seem kind of silly? Well, let me ask you something. 2022. Do we believe in the coming of the Lord? Do we believe the Lord's coming? Then why do we spend most of our lives with the stuff in our house? Instead of living in anticipation of the coming of the Lord. Come on, is that fair? Yeah, okay, in theory, we believe in hell. In theory, we believe lost people are going to hell. In theory, we believe that Christians need to tell the world about Jesus Christ so they can go to be with the Lord. In reality, we spend hours playing stupid video games. Well, it's not a sin. We're not talking about sin. Buying, selling, marrying, giving in marriage is not a sin. But if the Lord's coming, why are we devoting our lives to stuff in the house? What's, listen, Congress isn't killing the church. The White House isn't killing the church. The DOJ and FBI and RSV, and, that's not killing the church. What's killing the church is saved people aren't any more interested in Jesus Christ than lost people are. Amen. 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 And that indifference is why your pastor's depressed, and your deacons are depressed, and you're depressed, and your friends are depressed. Because we have the Lord, and we know the Lord, but we're living like people that aren't getting on the ark. And we're living like people aren't getting out for the fire. I already got one last point. It's a quick one. It's an easy one. Verse 32. Remember Lot's wife. Now, if you don't know, uh, Lot's family was, was brought out of Sodom for the, for the fire fell. And Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. And a man taught that in, in his Sunday school class one morning, and a little boy said, that's nothing. My mom looked back and turned into a telephone pole. But that's, but that's, 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 that's a whole different. It's all you'll remember about the whole sermon. Listen, Brother Jerry, Brother, Brother Matthews, Brother Vance, Brother Vance, listen, all, Brother, Brother Bill, but the Stein, but the Stein, all, listen, all of you, listen. You know what destroyed Lot? Lot's wife, you know what destroyed Lot's wife? She's, she's saved, she's redeemed, she's delivered. But she thought her best days were all behind her. She looked back because she thought there can't be anything ahead like what I've left behind and I don't care if it's the good old days of camp meetings or the days when people used to let you witness to them when you knocked on their doors or the days when visitors came every Sunday if you let the thought get in your heart that the your best days are all behind you and the best days of God's church are all behind us. And the best days of the gospel work are all behind us. You will turn to stone. Amen. 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 It'll harden your heart and you'll be useless. Amen. Amen. So what do you think is going to happen? I have no idea what's going to happen. Amen. I always people say, well, but America's doomed. It looks like it to me. I don't know. What do you know? What do I know? Well, we'll never have revivals again. How do you know? I don't know. But if you, listen, if you allow yourself 
to entertain the thought, all is lost, it's hopeless, apostasy, nobody's getting saved, shut down the baptistry, close, close down the ministries, you're done. And I don't know what's going to happen this year, but I know what happened last year. We had people get saved, we had people get baptized, we had people get happily married, we had unhappy marriages get put back together, we had, we had people that weren't doing anything for God get on fire and start doing something for God. You say, what about all that other junk? The kingdom of God is within you. Lock in on what God's doing instead of what the devil's doing. We've got to be delivered from this indifference, people. Our best days aren't behind us. They're not. Yep. It's not all over. Amen. It's not. If it was all over, we'd be raptured. Right. Amen. Right. <laughs> if the Lord was done saving people, we'd be out of here. Yeah. Amen. If His church was built, there was nothing left for us to do, we'd be in glory. Right. The fact that we are present in this world, in this hour, is proof that God's not done saving souls. Amen. Remember Lot's wife? She thought it was all behind her. Don't, don't be like her. Don't be like her. Remember those people in the days of Noah and the days of Lot? They're just living like God wasn't doing anything. Don't be like them. Those Pharisees, they, they were so busy demanding Jesus do something different than what Jesus wanted to do that he didn't get to do what he wanted to do in them. He's not done with me. He's not done with you. Amen. He's not done with our church. Amen. He's not done with your church. Amen. And if he was done with this world, it'd be torched. Can, can, we, can we free ourselves from all these voices and all these influences and all these websites and all these channels and all these people in the lobby that just have nothing but bad news to report? Can we get back to talking about the good news? Because there's plenty of it. Plenty of it. Lord, help us. Heavenly Father, deliver us from this indifference Deliver us from this defeated attitude. Deliver us from this mindset that all is lost and we're just hanging by a thread until the end. Lord, would you return uh, to us a victorious attitude, a conquering attitude, a, an, a, an attitude of excitement and enthusiasm about what you are yet doing in our lives and in our churches. Help us, God, please, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand the altar.